Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 8. George Kohan, a visionary who transformed fast food in Canada and beyond. George Kohan, the renowned founder and senior chairman of McDonald's Canada, passed away at the age of 86 on Friday night, leaving behind a monumental legacy in the fast food industry. His son Mark Kohan announced his passing in a heartfelt tribute, highlighting the loss felt by family, Canada, and the world. Born on April 19, 1937 in Chicago, Kohan was a graduate of Drake University and Northwestern University School of Law. His journey with McDonald's began in 1967 when he moved to Toronto as a licensee for the brand in Eastern Canada. In November 1968, he opened Canada's first McDonald's in London, Ontario, marking the start of a remarkable expansion. By 1971, Kohan had become the chairman, president, and CEO of McDonald's Restaurants of Canada, Limited, a position he held until July 1992. Under his leadership, McDonald's flourished in Canada, growing into a beloved and ubiquitous presence. Kohan's vision extended beyond North America. In 1976, he embarked on a challenging endeavor to bring McDonald's to the Soviet Union. His perseverance paid off in 1990 with the opening of the first McDonald's in Moscow, a landmark event in the fast food industry. Beyond business, Kohan's philanthropic efforts were significant. He founded Ronald McDonald House Charities in Canada and Russia, providing a haven for families with children undergoing medical treatment. Recognized for his contributions, Kohan was made a member of the Order of Canada in 1988 and received the Order of Friendship from the Russian government in 1998. In 2000, he was awarded the Order of Ontario, and in 2012, he received the key to the city of Toronto. His most recent honor was the Companion of the Order of Canada earlier this year. George Kohan's passing has been met with tributes from Canadian politicians, business figures, and many others on X reflecting the deep impact of his life and work. Tribute to George Cohen. Number 7. Ross McDonnell, a visionary filmmaker and celebrated cinematographer Ross McDonnell, an accomplished Irish filmmaker and Emmy-winning cinematographer, tragically passed away at the age of 44. Initially reported missing, McDonald's body was later discovered on a New York City beach on November 17, marking a sad end to a search that had concerned many. Born in Dublin, McDonald's journey in the world of visual storytelling was marked by his significant contributions to documentary filmmaking. He earned critical acclaim and an Emmy Award for his cinematography in The Trade, a Showtime documentary series that delved into the human impact of illicit industries. His foray into filmmaking began with a successful career in photography. He made a notable transition to film with his directorial debut, Colony, co-directed with Carter Gunn. The film, which premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, won the IDFA First Feature Award signaling McDonald's arrival as a filmmaker of note. Throughout his career, McDonald exhibited a rare versatility, excelling as a director, producer, and cinematographer. His work extended across various formats and genres, ranging from feature films to commercials, each marked by his distinct artistic vision. In addition to his Emmy win for The Trade, McDonald's talents were recognized with an Emmy nomination for his production work on Alien, a CNN Films, BBC, and Jigsaw Productions documentary. He also received accolades for his outstanding cinematography in The First Wave, directed by Matthew Heinemann. The circumstances of McDonald's passing were unexpected, with his bicycle found locked at Fort Tilden Beach in Queens, leading to speculation about the cause of death. The New York City Medical Examiner's Office concluded that there was no harm intended by others or self, and they are considering that the incident might have been an accidental water mishap. As the film community mourns his loss, Ross McDonald is remembered for his significant contributions to documentary filmmaking. 
and his unparalleled ability to capture compelling narratives through his lens. Tribute to Ross McDonnell. Number 6. Doug Ebold, a visionary in film editing. Doug Ebold, an esteemed film editor whose remarkable contributions spanned decades in the entertainment industry, sadly passed away at the age of 83 on November 8, a loss announced in the last 24 hours. His passing, caused by cancer, occurred at the Motion Picture and Television Country House and Hospital in Woodland Hills. Born on January 23, 1940 in Cincinnati, Ohio, Ebold spent his childhood in St. Petersburg, Florida. After completing his studies at Florida State University and serving in the U.S. Army until 1965, he embarked on his broadcasting career at WTVT-TV. His early experiences included operating the CBS pool camera on the USS Wasp for the Gemini 6 and 7 space capsule landings. Ebold's remarkable film editing career featured a 20-year collaboration with the renowned producer Dick Wolf. He played a pivotal role in editing the pilots for the groundbreaking series Law & Order and Law & Order SVU, significantly contributing to their acclaim. He also worked on other notable productions by Donald P. Belisario, such as Magnum, P.I., Quincy M.E., Quantum Leap, Tequila and & Benetti, and the pilot for Crowfoot. His editing prowess shone through on Miami Vice and the NBC crime series Players. Ebold's dedication to his craft earned him an Emmy nomination for the 1992 miniseries Drug Wars, The Cocaine Cartel, executive produced by Michael Mann. His career also spanned various TV series, including BL Striker, Walker, Texas Ranger, Xena, Warrior Princess, and Tour of Duty, as well as films like Ladies and Gentlemen, The Rolling Stones, Off Limits, and The Break. In 2012, Ibold received a Career Achievement Award at the Eddie Awards, presented by Dick Wolf. His journey in the industry also included assistant editing and operating on John Lennon and Yoko Ono's 1972 telefilm, Imagine, and he featured in the 2018 documentary, John and Yoko, Above Us Only Sky. Known for his restless spirit and boundless curiosity, Ebold's diverse and influential career left a lasting impact. He is survived by his brother, Robert. Tribute to Doug Ebold. Number 5. Ingvar Numa, a stalwart of Norwegian entertainment. Ingvar Numa, a towering figure in Norwegian entertainment, passed away on November 25, 2023, at the age of 79. Born on October 1, 1944, in Porsgrunn, Norway, Numa was a multi-talented artist known for his significant contributions as a singer, actor, review writer, and director. Numa's enduring legacy is closely tied to his role in Dizzy Tunes, a show group he led for approximately 40 years. Under his leadership, Dizzy Tunes evolved into one of the most successful ensembles in Norwegian entertainment history. This was a testament to his creative vision and artistic excellence. In recognition of his contributions, Numa was honored with the prestigious Leonard Statuette in 1990, a distinction that Dizzy Tunes itself would receive three years later in 1993. Besides his work with Dizzy Tunes, Numi formed a notable comedy duo with Tor Eric Gunstrom. Their performances, often as part of Dizzy Tunes shows, but sometimes independent of the group, captivated audiences across Norway, especially in the 1970s and 1980s. Numa's role as the straight man complemented Gunstrom's humorous and eccentric character, making them one of the most beloved comedy acts in Norway. Numa's talents extended beyond the stage. He lent his voice to the Norwegian version of the animated film The Lion King, titled Le Venus Kong, and voiced the chronicler in the Norwegian dub of the 2008 video game The Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon. On a personal note, Numa was born to parents Harold Numa and Erna Andreassen. His first marriage was to Kari Fogsted from 1969 to 1991. He later married dancer Ingrid Meland in 1996. He was also the father of television host Thomas Numa. 
Ingvar Numa's death marks the end of an era in Norwegian entertainment. His remarkable career, characterized by versatility, humor, and a deep connection with audiences, leaves a lasting legacy in the world of performance art. Tribute to Ingvar Numa Number 4 Steve Jurczyk, A Legacy in Space Exploration Steve Jurczyk, a prominent figure in NASA's history, passed away on Thanksgiving Day from pancreatic cancer at the age of 61. His 32-year tenure at NASA culminated in him reaching the pinnacle of agency leadership, leaving a lasting impact on space exploration and research. Jurczyk's journey with NASA began in 1988 as an aerospace technologist at Langley Research Center, marking the start of a distinguished career. He held various key positions, including the head of the Space Technology Mission Directorate and Director of Langley Research Center. His expertise and dedication led him to the role of Associate Administrator, the top civil servant position in NASA in 2018. During the transition to the Biden administration in early 2021, Yurtzik served as the Acting Administrator of NASA until Bill Nelson's appointment. His leadership during this crucial period was a testament to his commitment and skill. Post-retirement from NASA, Yurcik continued his passion for space exploration as president and CEO of Quantum Space, and later as executive vice president of space programs at IBX. His focus on commercial lunar-related infrastructure and services showcased his vision for the future of space exploration. Yurcik's academic background, with degrees in electrical engineering from the University of Virginia, laid the foundation for his stellar career. He received numerous honors, including the NASA Distinguished Service Medal and the Presidential Rank Award for Distinguished Executive, reflecting his exceptional contributions to NASA and the field of space exploration. Survived by his wife Anne and daughters Kim and Sarah, Yurtzik's legacy extends beyond his professional achievements, his family and his memory encourages donations to cancer charity in lieu of flowers. The space community, including current and former NASA officials, colleagues, and space reporters, have expressed their condolences and shared tributes, highlighting the profound impact Yurtzik had on NASA and the broader space exploration community. Tribute to Steve Yurtzik. Number 3. Betty Rollin, A Courageous Voice in Memoir and Advocacy Betty Rollin, an influential network news correspondent and author, passed away at 87 on November 14th in Basel, Switzerland. Renowned for her honest autobiographies about very personal topics, Rollin made a thoughtful choice about her life's conclusion, with support from a compassionate end-of-life care organization. She had been suffering from arthritis, a gastrointestinal condition, and the grief of her husband Harold Edwards' death in 2020. Born on January 3, 1936 in New York City, Rollin grew up in Yonkers, New York. She pursued acting at Sarah Lawrence College and later studied under Sanford Meisner and Lee Strasberg. Her early career saw her in roles alongside icons like Gloria Swanson and as a writer at Vogue magazine. She joined NBC News in the early 1970s, making significant contributions as a journalist until the 1990s. Rollins' legacy is largely defined by her memoirs. First, You Cry details her battle with breast cancer and mastectomy, contributing to public discourse on the importance of early detection. Her frank approach resonated with many, helping to destigmatize the conversation around breast cancer. This work was later adapted into a CBS television movie starring Mary Tyler Moore. Her second memoir, Last Wish, recounts the emotional and controversial decision to assist her mother suffering from ovarian cancer in ending her life. Rollins' accolades include an Emmy Award and an Alfredine DuPont Columbia University Award for her journalism. Her work at NBC News and PBS's Religion and Amp Ethics News Weekly further cemented her reputation as a fearless and compassionate storyteller. Betty Rollins' open and heartfelt exploration of life's most challenging moments has left a lasting impact. Her advocacy for truth and storytelling continues to inspire and comfort 
those facing similar struggles. Tribute to Betty Rollin. Number two, Levi Walker Jr., a cherished mascot and Native American icon. Levi Walker Jr., renowned for embodying the Atlanta Braves mascot Chief Nakahoma, passed away peacefully at the age of 80 on November 24th. A beloved figure in the world of sports, Walker was the mascot for the Braves from 1966 to 1985, leaving an indelible mark with his spirited performances and cultural representation. Born and raised in Michigan, Walker was a proud member of the Odawa tribe, bringing authenticity and honor to his role as the only Native American to portray Chief Nakahoma. Before joining the Braves, he worked various jobs, including as an insurance salesman, warehouse worker, and plumber. Walker's tenure as Chief Nakahoma was marked by memorable moments, including an incident in 1969 when his teepee accidentally caught fire during a celebration with a smoke bomb. Despite the hazards, he managed the situation with poise, demonstrating his commitment to his role. Walker's portrayal of Chief Nakahoma was not without controversy. Amidst rising concerns over the representation of Native Americans in sports, activist Russell Means filed a lawsuit against the use of Native American imagery, including Chief Nakahoma. However, Walker expressed pride in his role, viewing it as a positive representation of Native American culture in professional sports. His departure from the Braves in 1986 was reported to be over disputes regarding pay and missed appearances. Despite these challenges, Walker remained fond of his time as the Braves' mascot, often expressing gratitude for the love and support he received from fans. Hospitalized in July 2022, his health had been in decline, but his passion for his role as Chief Nakahoma never waned. Walker leaves behind a legacy of bridging sports and cultural representation, remembered fondly by fans and the Native American community alike. Tribute to Levi Walker Jr. Court convicted ex-officer injured in prison. Derek Chauvin, the former police officer convicted in a high-profile legal case, was injured in a prison incident, according to recent reports. The event occurred at the Federal Correction Institution in Tucson, Arizona. Details about the incident and Chauvin's current condition were shared by the Minnesota Attorney General, who emphasized the importance of safety and justice for all inmates. The prison authorities and the FBI have confirmed an assault at the facility though specific identities have not been disclosed. Immediate medical response was provided, and the injured individual was taken to a hospital for treatment. In response to the incident, the prison has temporarily suspended visitations. The situation is under investigation, and further details are awaited. The incident highlights the ongoing challenges and safety considerations within correctional facilities. In a heartwarming break from the often somber news we share, Paris Hilton brings a delightful announcement to light this Thanksgiving. The renowned socialite and entrepreneur joyously revealed the birth of her second child, a daughter named London. Hilton's Instagram post showcased a tender pink baby shirt with London embroidered on it, accompanied by heart-shaped sunglasses and a cuddly stuffed bunny. Hilton, 42, and her husband Carter Reum welcomed London into their lives via surrogate. This news adds another layer of joy to their family, joining their son Phoenix. Celebrities and fans alike, including Hilton's aunt Kyle Richards and supermodel Naomi Campbell, flooded the post with congratulatory messages and heartfelt emojis. The announcement was also shared in a TikTok video, where Hilton playfully engaged her niece and nephew about their excitement for their new cousin. This joyous news follows the couple's initial decision to keep the birth of their son, Phoenix, private a topic candidly explored in Hilton's reality series, Paris in Love. Hilton's approach to her family's privacy, particularly regarding her children, stands in contrast to her public persona, highlighting her desire to protect and cherish these personal moments. 
With London's arrival, the Hilton Ream family warmly welcomes this new chapter, sharing their happiness with the world while savoring the precious moments of family life. Tiffany Haddish, the acclaimed comedian and actress, faced a setback early Friday morning when she was arrested under suspicion of driving under the influence in Los Angeles. The incident occurred around 5.45 a.m. when Beverly Hills Police, responding to a call, discovered Haddish seemingly unresponsive behind the wheel of a stationary vehicle with its engine running. This isn't the first time Haddish has encountered such legal troubles. In January 2022, she was similarly arrested in Peachtree City, Georgia for alleged marijuana use before driving. That case is still pending, with a trial scheduled for January. The incident follows a challenging period for Haddish, who faced and denied serious allegations in a lawsuit last year. Despite these setbacks, Haddish continues to shine in her professional life. Having recently performed at the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles and starred in several significant productions. An Emmy and Grammy winner, Haddish's achievements include a best-selling memoir, The Last Black Unicorn, and prominent roles in movies like Girls Trip and Night School. Her recent arrest has yet to be publicly addressed by Haddish or her representatives. Number 1. Dale Spender, pioneering feminist scholar and advocate for women's rights. Dale Spender, an influential Australian feminist scholar, teacher, writer, and consultant, passed away leaving behind a remarkable legacy in the field of women's rights and literature. A pioneering figure in feminist thought, Spender co-founded Pandora Press in 1983, a groundbreaking feminist imprint dedicated to non-fiction, and was the series editor of Penguin's Australian Women's Library from 1987. Born in Newcastle, New South Wales, Spender was the niece of politician Percy Spender and crime writer Jean Spender. She grew up as the eldest of three children and attended Burwood Girls High School in Sydney. Early in her career, she taught English at Meadowbank Boys High School and later at Dapto High School before lecturing at James Cook University and eventually moving to London. Spender's groundbreaking work, Man-Made Language, based on her PhD research, revolutionized the understanding of how language perpetuates patriarchal societies. She argued that language forms the limits of our reality, and in patriarchal societies it works in favor of men, often at the expense of women. This seminal book brought to light the intersection of linguistic and economic determinism in oppressing women. Her literary contributions included the feminist critique, The Diary of Elizabeth Pepys, a spoof written from the perspective of Samuel Pepys's wife, Elizabeth. She was also instrumental in creating the Women's International Knowledge Encyclopedia and Data Database, and held prominent editorial roles in publishing. Renowned for her distinctive choice of wearing purple in homage to the suffragettes, Spender's personal life included a long-term relationship with Professor Ted Brown. Her contributions to feminism and literature earned her the member of the Order of Australia in 1996, recognizing her service to women's equality and opportunity. Tribute to Dale Spender, 